Hi everyone. How's everybody doing today? Can everybody see and hear me? Just getting all set up here and ready to go. I'm got uh, I'm just going to spend a couple minutes talking. Um, hold on a second. One second. I've got a little feedback thing. Um, okay. All right. Okay. So we are good. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Tiffany Estevanzo. I'm a medical illustrator. I'm based out of Knoxville, Tennessee, and um, super excited to be drawing with you today in anticipation of Sketchy's next uh, 30 Faces, 30 Days Challenge, and this time it's going to be all about Procreate, which I love and I use all the time, so I'm really excited to do um, this portrait of the lovely Jamie today. Um, let me take a second and kind of see where everybody's tuning in from here. I see Williamsburg, Virginia, and Maryland. Hi, Vivian and Cheryl and Shannon. And okay, Berlin, great. New Jersey, I'm seeing some names, a few names that look familiar to me from my anatomy class. So really excited that some of you all are going to be here. So that's exciting for me. Colorado. So it's noon here in Tennessee. It's um, kind of a beautiful slash cloudy day. I uh, will apologize in advance. I've got crazy allergies happening right now. In Knoxville, we're very proud of all of our flowering trees and we're all super allergic. <laughs> so I'm um, fighting off some allergies, but um, let's see, Germany, France, Oregon, London, England, okay, fantastic, Seattle, Wales, Kentucky, Ireland, oh, wonderful, my kids were just asking me, do you ever, um, talking about Ireland the other day, and asking if I ever have any students or interactions with anybody from Ireland, and I said, not yet, so Frank, you're my first Irish um, person. I get to go tell my kids. And Netherlands, Detroit, Saudi Arabia, fantastic, fantastic. I love this. I love that we get to all connect in this way and, uh, you know, get to know each other kind of virtually. So this is wonderful. Um, all right. Well, um, I'm not going to lie. I don't have a plan for today. I'm going to kind of wing it in Procreate, and to be honest, that's one of the reasons I love Procreate so much, because sometimes I just want to draw, you know, and I don't necessarily know how I want to take the drawing or what I want to do, and Procreate really lets you do that. You can start down a path and just kind of see where it leads you, um, so that's what we're going to do today. Uh, sometimes I... I know exactly what I want to do with the drawing, and Procreate gives me the tools to do that. But I thought for today, um, I just I loved the reference photo, and I thought we'd just see what happens. So, if you're using Procreate, um, I've just got an eight by ten basic um, canvas pulled up, and if you're working traditionally, that's wonderful too. So, pencil, watercolor, whatever tool you've decided to use. Um, but are you ready to start drawing? Let's do it. Let's do it. I see a couple more people still logging in, so I'll kind of start off a little slow and give everybody a chance to kind of jump in and do their thing. Let me switch the cameras here so you can see my drawing big. All right. And I might go ahead and kind of close out this um, reference photo because I'll be working with it um, side by side on my iPad. A lot of times I print out a photo, today I didn't, so I really need to have it handy here on my iPad. So I'll just close that out so you can see a little bit better. So one of the things Procreate allows you to do is you can either you know work side by side in iPhoto, which is kind of my preferred method, or you can use this little reference window 
and let's see. Oops. You can find that at here under Canvas, and you can just click on Reference, and it will ask if you want to import a photo, and you can do it that way. Um, that's a great way to work. I don't always do it because I feel like I can't quite enlarge big enough sometimes, and I really like to see what I'm working on nice and large at the whole, I can't change the, the size of this window quite enough, um, but you can, you know, zoom in there. So whichever method you prefer is fine. I think I'm going to just get rid of that. And I'm just going to work kind of side by side here. So the other thing, if I was drawing traditionally and She's got this really great head tilt, you know, um, the whole camera's tilted. Now what I would do is take my paper and I would be working at an angle to kind of correct that. But um, in Procreate, we have uh, the option to just go ahead and rotate our canvas or rotate the photo. So that's what I think I'm going to do just to make it easier starting off with my proportions and my drawing instead of trying to draw her at this really steep angle, I'm just going to tilt tilt it back. Um, and we can do that here in iPhoto, and I've already kind of done that, but I'll show you how if you're following along. Um, I'm just going to hit Edit in iPhoto, and then you can come down here on the crop. And let's see, is my camera getting that? And then you can just adjust um, the angle once it's in crop. You can rotate hit the rotate button and then just pull and adjust down here until you get it to the right angle and then we can zoom in. So I'm going to focus on her face to start with and this was just going to make it a lot easier for me to kind of go off of. All right. Okay. So this is how I start. I've gone ahead and just given myself a really basic kind of guide to go off of. And I'll show you how I did that. Just do a little time lapse. So I would start with um, a circle. And the circle just to me really represents the base of the skull. Um, I'm sloppy, I'm fast when I get to this stage. So what it usually falls about the base of the nose, but not always, because I'm just um, just kind of trying to get down my lines here and my directional thing. And then I will give a little bit of an indication about where I think that the temples fall. And then I start to divide the face in thirds. So I use hairline to eyebrow, eyebrow to base and nose, base and nose to chin. And in this case, if we look carefully, you can see she's got really wide um, an eye area and her eyebrows are just slightly lifted. So that space is going to be larger. So the space from her chin to the tip of her nose, from the tip of her toes to the tip of her nose, <laughs> not her toes, to the eyebrows is going to be a little bit bigger. And then I'm just kind of roughing in some of the basic shapes as I, I see them here. And I've gone ahead and just kind of added some little circular shapes to kind of indicate the fullness of, you know, her cheeks and her little chin area. So that's where I'm going to start. I'll give you a second to catch up and I'm going to flip back over here and look at some comments. I see, oh, we've got some Canadians. I see, hi, Betty and Rick. I love seeing Rick on here. And Carl, hi, Carl, over from South Africa. Uh, let's see. The reference photo, um, Jessica's asking, it should be linked in um, below the description in YouTube. I think Sketchy can probably, um, there's probably a link down below there. Okay, she found it. No problem. And Kelly, Kelly from Knoxville. Um, Kelly, how are your allergies? Do you have allergies? <laughs> It's beautiful here right now. It's just, it's it's gorgeous. But, you know, you go outside and you'll be sneezing in a second. Um, so, okay. All right. Um, 
if you have any questions like while we're drawing, feel free to throw them in there and I'll try to take a lot of breaks and glance over and see what people want to know. Um, I'm going to use all native brushes to procreate just to make it easy today. So this, what I've started with here is the gouache brush. And one of the things that I loved about this reference photo, if I zoom out, go back to the larger view here. Um, I loved all the colors in her hair. You know, there's, it's so much fun to find color that you don't normally think of in things. And her hair just had these beautiful kind of violets and blue in it. So I may um, go ahead and just change my background color to one of those beautiful blues that I want to pick up in her lips and, and throughout the picture. So let's just go ahead and start with a, a background color that's a little bit different. Just gonna pick the color picker and go down here and move that around blue until I get a nice kind of light, light blue to um, be my base for everything. So I think I like that. So I'm gonna say done and then we'll go back in. All right, so I find it really helpful to uh, name my layers as I go along so I don't want to lose my base sketch here so I'm just going to go ahead and name it I'm just going to name it sketch and then I can create another layer to go below that I'm just going to drag and pull it below and we're going to name that um, base color And now what I want to do is go ahead and just kind of start to throw in some of those warm skin tones. Um, I'm going to go back to my color picker and I have some uh, palette of favorites. These are colors that I tend to use a lot, but for today, let me just go in here and pick one until it looks kind of right. It doesn't have to be perfect to start off of. We're just kind of giving ourselves something to go from. And then I'm going to go back to my brush and um, I'm on the gouache, which is under painting. Uh, another brush I really like to use are the, um, where are they? I've adjusted it, but these, these Nico roll brushes are one of my favorite too. Um, I'm not going to go full opacity. I'm going to go down to about half opacity. And I'm going to adjust the size kind of big and then making sure I'm on that base layer I'm just going to start to throw in a nice solid background of color sometimes I start adding color at this stage where you know the sketch is still very rough and sometimes I really polish off a sketch. Um, there is just no, oops, no wrong way to do it. And this isn't even really the color that I want to end up with. But again, I'm not too worried about that. Go in here and adjust it, get something with a little more golden tones. Because I don't have the opacity, a full opacity, I'm able to just keep coming in here and adjusting. I'm not worried about highlights or shadows or anything yet. I'm just throwing in some color. And if some of that blue peeks through, that's great. I, I like it. I'm going to go for it. So, um, I was like, Thomas is asking, do I use a paper-like screen protector? Um, I do. So I have two iPads. This one, I have the paper-like on it, and the other one, I don't. I've been using it for about a year, and I still don't know if I like it. 
It does make it feel more like a traditional pencil on paper, which is cool, but um, I find it's really hard on the tips of my um, Apple Pencil and I have to replace them a lot. And when they start to wear down, it feels very scratchy. So um, at least in my case, the jury is still out on the screen protectors, um, but I'm definitely worth a shot because I know a lot of people just, just love them. So, and oh, can I show the rough sketch again? Um, I think you can kind of see there. Um, not a lot of details yet, but I, I feel like the proportions are good enough for me to go from. So that's kind of where I'm going to go. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So now I've gone ahead and I've lightened the skin tone here a bit. And at this stage, I'm just, I'm going to look for um, the shapes and the main values. So I'm going to go a little bit dark and I'm going to go a little bit light. We're going to create a little bit of form and then I'm going to go back and add some details. So if you're drawing traditionally, this would, you know, kind of be the stage where um, you would be just maybe adding some shadows and going a little bit darker in areas. with, you know, working digitally, you get really used to being able to work both ways, to being able to work lighter and being able to push it and work darker as well. And I've still got my colors um, a little bit warmer um, than they appear in the photo, but that's okay with me because I come back later and adjust a lot of things. And I'm definitely going to come down and work um, kind of on her chest and shoulder area a little bit when I zoom out. But for today and the amount of time we have, I think I'll just focus on the face. And then um, if I'm fast enough, maybe we'll get we'll get to that. And I definitely want to at least get to the hair. So I'm going to go ahead and get white. And I'm going to go and do some work on the eyes now. You know, the sclera, the white part of your eyes, is never totally perfectly white, but I'm going to be doing this on a reduced opacity. So we're going to see some of that uh, warm color uh, coming through, maybe even some of the blue behind it. There's so many ways to work in Procreate. Um, I think that's why if you haven't already signed up for the next 30 faces, you should definitely give it a shot, whether you're appropriate pro or, or new, but um, there's going to be quite a number of different teachers. And because we all kind of approach it differently, you're, and you're just going to learn a ton. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be there every, all 30 days <laughs> trying. So. I'm looking forward to uh, learning some new tricks, that's for sure. And so you can see, I've just added a splotch of white in there, um, but it's not perfectly white, so. I'll just add a few other little highlights down here. If you've um, taken any of my classes, either in anatomy or um, during one of the 30 faces challenges, you probably noticed that I jump around a lot. I'm not 
um, one of the artists that that stays in one area until it's you know done or almost done. I really like to just kind of jump around a lot. But I love watching artists draw when they can do that, when they <laughs> do a, you know, the entire painting is completely undone and that one eye is just gorgeous. I love, I'm fascinated by that. But I'm definitely um, a hopper, a hop around. Okay, so it's starting to have a little bit more um, form. And at this point, I'm going to go in and make a new layer. And I'm going to do this one above my sketch layer. And I'm going to just rename it. I'm going to name this one Details. And now I'm going to go in and zoom in and, and um, get everything a little bit more accurate. Um, I'm not going to go with a black. I actually did my underlying sketch in kind of a blue, and I think I'm going to do that again. Just kind of a dark, kind of navy. And I'm going to start off with my gouache brush, and then I'm going to maybe move into a more of a sketching type pencil. I'm going to zoom in as much as I can. Okay. So at this point, you know, I'm doing the upper eye, I start to dream about doing eyelashes and I have to tell myself no, try to keep myself away from, from that. I'll come back to eyelashes towards the end. Just looking at the overall shape of that upper and lower lid. One thing um, anatomy wise to look for when you're drawing the eyes, the lower lid here is a nice, a nice curve. And then when you get to a certain point, it kind of starts to straighten off. So, and it's nice and flat, and then about here, it gets thin. So you might have a really nice kind of highlight where you can see that thickness of the eye all through here, but then once you get to about here, it starts to flatten off, to round off and just get thinner. Can't see that too much in her case. I'm always looking at my underlying base sketch, but I'm not married to it because, you know, I do it fast and I make a lot of mistakes. It's another wonderful thing about working digitally or in Procreate, you just make as many mistakes as you want. It's that wonderful undo button, right? Just giving myself kind of an idea about the shadows here. So instead of trying to draw individual eyebrow hairs at this point, I'm just going to give it a kind of light shade.
Um, somebody said they're joining late. Will there be a replay? Yes. Um, it will be recorded and you'll be able to go back and um, catch the beginning. Sometimes I tune in on these um, Saturday live drawings and I'm, you know, doing something else around the house or I just have them playing and kind of listen and watch and then go back and, and do the drawing later. So we recently did a uh, Zoom drawing with uh, the folks in my anatomy class and oh my gosh that was so much fun I just it was just so nice it's great being able to come over here and check and and see your comments and kind of talk back and forth but with zoom and actually being able to see people's faces and and uh, gosh it just I just loved it, it was super fun I feel really spoiled as a teacher because I feel like I, I get to, to know you all through your work and when you draw and, and tag me or, or send me a question on sketchy art school or something, I just, I really enjoy, enjoy seeing everybody from, you know, really skilled advanced artists to people who are just starting out and everybody's got a story and I love it. Several people, you know, tell me that they were just picking up drawing and they were in their 70s or 80s. And I just I love that. I love that. So I am. Um, I'm a medical illustrator, so that I that means I. Spend the week illustrating uh, medical textbooks and surgeries, um, diagrams of anatomy, things like that. So it really lends my art style to be very, what I call, you know, kind of illustrative. So I do a lot of uh, heavy lines and outlines. Um, it's just what kind of comes naturally to me unless I'm very specifically and intentionally trying to do something hyper realistic, which I enjoy and, and do from time to time. But on a normal basis, I tend to be very outlining. So um, when I'm doing something like Procreate, you'll see um, I'm probably, there is no dark blue outline here on the side of her nostril. So this is just a little bit of my kind of style showing through. Um, and I can come back later if I want to make that more realistic and kind of blend it in. But at this stage, I really like to just kind of give the drawing a cohesiveness by adding a little bit of outline everywhere. So, um, so with lips, I always think about the lips as having um, kind of like three balls on the top, like one, two, three kind of shapes. And then on the bottom, it's more uh, more two kind of to say, you know, um, she's got insanely gorgeous full lips. So it's really evident on her, um, not on everybody so much, not on me, certainly. But that's kind of the shape that I have in mind as I'm laying out the lips and you can see if, if you can kind of lightly see where I've drawn my three shapes the lips go um, flat towards the corner a little bit more too so when it comes in time time to shade you know you can kind of keep an eye out for that
And again here I'm adding a little bit of dark outline where it doesn't really exist, but I may come back and kind of adjust that as I'm drawing later on. Another thing I love about being digital and Procreate is um, the smudge tool and blending tool. I use that a lot, which is uh, fairly ironic because I hate smudging <laughs> in traditional drawings. It just, I love it when other people do it and they do it great, but I don't know. I unintentionally smudge a lot with my hands, but I'm not, uh, I don't use the stump for do a lot of smudging traditionally, so it's funny that I like it so much in Procreate. Her jawline in here, try and get that right. So we can get the shape of her face more accurate. We won't have to be quite so perfect or precious as I like to say um, when it comes to her hair, which can be nice and wild. So I've cropped my photo in a little bit, so I've lost a little bit of the neck and chest anatomy, but I'll come back to that later. I keep thinking that um, some neck anatomy would be helpful. So if you're in one of my anatomy classes and you think, Neck anatomy would be something you'd be interested in. Let me know. Sometimes we draw floating heads, but usually they're attached to something, right? I'm using, um, I'm still using the gouache brush um, right now, which is um, under painting and gouache. I like I like it. Um, I like how it interacts with itself. Um, it, it does this really kind of soft, subtle blending thing. So I use the gouache a lot. It's one of my favorites. And when I'm blending, I usually use the same brush that I'm painting with. So in this case, um, I would I blend with gouache. So. Okay, so okay, so this is nice. I like I feel like we've got a nice kind of good base and I can kind of zoom out and take a look, but this gives me something to kind of go for and now kind of start creating a little bit more of the details. So so now my layers, I've got base color, turn them off so we can kind of see, right? Which is just kind of a um smudgy blend of that, and then my um, sketch on top. Oh, look what I did. Look what I did. I did my details on top of my sketch layer. All right, no worries. There are, there is nothing on the details layer. So <laughs> I do that a lot. It happens. So no problem. Well, now my sketch and my detail layer are together. So let me change my detail layer and rename that. And we'll just do top color. And now I'm going to come in and um, paint on top of my sketch. So this is going to kind of obscure and blur some of that. And um, let's go back to that eye. Let's do, she's, she's got such beautiful lips. So let's focus on her eyes and her lips. And then hopefully we'll have enough time to, to do some fun stuff with the hair. But let's, let's do her eyes and lips. Um, I'm looking at this and in my lighting and in my photograph, I know she has dark brown eyes. I can see it a little bit more here, but there's just this gorgeous deep navy blue that just keeps coming out. So I'm going to keep using that 
and I'm going to go ahead and stick with my gouache for now. I'm in the top color layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and color in all of her iris, that beautiful kind of blue. We get to choose, you know, it's just the fun thing about being an artist, right? We get to use artistic license. We get to choose how realistic and how fantasy, I suppose, we're feeling every day. So that's something fun we get to play with. Um, now that I've got that base, I am going to go back and get, pick a color that is a little bit more realistic, this kind of warm brown. And I'm going to come back and add a little bit of that on the outer edge of my iris. And I'm going to switch back and forth between the eyes so I can keep them kind of similar. This eye is definitely getting a bit more light, so I'll lighten it up, give it a little, a little more. And then I'm going to go back to that blue. I'm just going to sample it. You can save it as a favorite, but I'm just going to touch and hold on it and that will sample my blue color and it will switch my blue back. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go within my brush palette and click on gouache and I'm going to go down here to rendering and see this blend mode? I'm going to switch that to multiply. Um, I switch back and forth between blend mode from multiply and normal a lot. What Multiply does is it allows the gouache to act more like a, a watercolor glaze. And it's the same color, but it goes on and it will darken anything it's going on. So that's going to allow me to kind of create that big pupil shape. And if I go here, I can darken that top eyelash ridge. Because I use the gouache brush so much and I use multiply so much too, I've gone ahead and created a set of favorites. And you can see I have gouache, what brush labeled gouache in and one labeled gouache in, and that tells me this one's already set to normal, this one's already set to multiply. Um, so I can just pick them quick without having to kind of go through the whole um, brush studio every single time. I'm going to, every once in a while, I have to go down to my sketch layer and get my eraser. Let me put it on. Really doesn't matter what's on. I usually like to keep my eraser on one of the, let me go, just a basic hard edge brush. And then I can come in here and clean up a bit of my sketch where it's maybe making my eye too big. Here. Yes. Um, somebody, uh, Frank is saying to lock the drawing layer before painting. That's, yes, such a good idea. Such a good thing that I do maybe one out of 10 times <laughs> that I remember to do something like that. <laughs> um, okay, so I've just uh, touched up here a little bit on my sketch layer to clean that up so that my um, irises are just a bit cleaner. I'm gonna go back to the top color now and 
I don't know if you can really see, but because I did that white, I've still got quite a bit of color here coming through. So that's what I like to let my drawings do is just kind of show some of that background color coming through. I've got my blue here again. I'm going to lighten it up a little bit. I'm still in the top color layer. Just going to add a little bit more shadow and color to that white of the eye. And I'm going to get kind of a peachish pink. And let's go in here in the corner of the eye and just add a little bit of color there. You can really not see it at all here, hardly, on her right eye, our left, her right. And I think I'll switch back to multiply for my gouache the way we just did and get that just a bit darker. So this is just not going to look right until I add some of the highlights in the eye. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Eye highlights are like, um, they're like candy to me. <laughs> I try to save them to the end, but they're so much fun and they just bring everything to life. Hold on. I bet this is set to multiply. Behind, yeah. There we go. Find a couple little spots in the eye that are just a bit wider than the rest. Get in there. Okay, so let's work with that. I say this a lot and not to repeat myself, but if you ever want to push yourself or learn, challenge yourself as to why you do certain things when you're drawing, um, do a drawing and talk to yourself the whole time as if you are teaching because I find that it's taught me so much about why I make the decisions I do when I'm drawing or painting is when I'm teaching a class or filming a video by talking about it it just kind of something starts to click and I start to think oh okay So challenge yourself to every once in a while. I give you permission to talk to yourself. <laughs> I'm just coming in now with a darker skin tone color here. And I'm on the top color layer. So this is going uh, over my sketch. So it's going to obscure some of the, the blue below. I really like to, you know, move around a lot because it really just kind of spreads that whatever color I'm using around, it creates a nice harmony. Uh, 
um, undo, favorite button and procreate right here. Also, you can do undo by tapping with two fingers. So in my lessons for um, the next 30 faces, 30 days, starting next month, I promise I do use more than one brush. <laughs> I'm going to stick into the gouache brush today, but we do use more than one brush. But it's amazing how much you can accomplish with just one brush. Okay, so um, I think I want to go and spend a little bit of time on her her lips, and I want to start, so far everything we've done has been warm tone on warm tone on warm tone on this cool background. So I want to start bringing some of those cool tones um, back in to kind of create that balance. And I'm just going to, I'm just sampling the background color. That's all I'm doing right now. And let me get on my brush. Still in gouache. And now I'm going to come in in some of these areas of highlight. And I'm adding some of that light blue back in. looking for areas of her face where there seems to be some reflected light and just some cooler tones. eyebrows there's a lot of kind of this light blue but probably the most in her lips so I'm gonna come down here and You have to really let yourself think beyond what you know or you know you know to be true. We know to be true that people's lips tend to be some form of shade of skin tone or pink. Um, but there are so many other beautiful colors everywhere to be found in the face. So we just have to embrace that. Okay, so I've got the blue. Let's get a little bit more purpley. And I'm going on top of my sketch, so I'm starting to lose some of the sketch lines down there, but I know they're there and I'm not worried about them. There are a lot of really cool ways to um, sample colors, you know, from a photo. You can pull it in and actually sample it yourself. Um, I really enjoy the challenge of kind of just color matching on my own, but. That's certainly a helpful thing to do sometimes is to go ahead and pre-make a palette. And I'm going to just go really dark and kind of go in here and re-emphasize the crease between her lips.
No teeth today, no glasses. <laughs> I tried to pick one that was fairly straightforward. So add some of those vertical lip lines and then come back with white. Again, I, you know, I use white a lot, but I rarely use it at 100% opacity. So because I keep the opacity low, it's able to pick up the colors beneath and, and blend more. So I could go and try to find the perfect shade of off white. But this is fast and easy. All right. Okay. I can get my blend tool here, and I think um, I think I will just go. Let's go ahead and keep it on gouache. How many of you were able to take the last 30 faces, 30 days in watercolor and gouache? Oh my gosh, I saw so just gorgeous paintings come out of that class. Um, I wasn't able to do that one. We just, we just moved. In fact, I think there's a, see the boxes. <laughs> still behind me in my office. So I had a lot going on the last month and a half, but I'm very much looking forward to taking it this summer. So if some of you did that and are now switching to Procreate, maybe doing a Procreate entirely in the gouache brush feels, feels about right. Okay, so I'm just kind of blending things together a little bit. And now I think the lips have gone too cool. So what I'm going to do is get a warmer, a warmer red. And then I'm going to get my gouache brush. And let me go down and do it. For those of you who don't have it saved in your favorites, let me do it the real way. Um, under painting gouache. And I'm going to go back. I'm going to make sure it's on multiply. I want this on multiply for right now. And I'm just going to go light. I'm just going to give it a wash. A nice kind of warm red wash. All those colors still there, still shining through, but It's kind of warming it up a bit. All right. And while I have the same brush, I might just look around for any other areas that might benefit from a little warmth. Check my time here. I think my, um, probably an accurate count for how long I spend on a appropriate drawing is probably about 
two hours. That seems to be where mine tend to fall. So I'm definitely not going to get this as finished as I want. Um, I'm going to go in here and erase. I've kind of, or just, no, I'll just darken, darken over this eye here. I lost some of that darkness. Um, a lot of times I will go ahead and do eyelashes on a separate level just because they're finicky and I know that I might want to go back and change the skin tone underneath. So let's make an eyelash level. Let's do some eyelashes and then let's try to do something fun for her hair before we run off. Okay. Um, and keep to the gouache brush. Hmm. I'm going to go full opacity and get a nice dark. I'm still kind of using that navy instead of black or brown. And when I do eyelashes, I don't think about them individually. I think of them in clumps, you know, and they don't always go the way you intend them to. They cross over each other. I usually draw them exaggerated, a little bit longer than needs be, because then I take my smudge tool and I come and I smudge them a bit. And then I take my eraser on just a soft brush under airbrush. And then a lot of times I come back and I just kind of lightly fade them off a little bit. I can come back and pull out one or two. Her eyelashes are pretty dark, but sometimes you can even see a highlight on that. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for that. Here they're a little bit lighter over here, so. Can't see them not quite as long here just because they're kind of sticking straight out into space. So just kind of give a little indication. And smudge. And erase. Apologize if you can hear some construction background noise. There's building going on near here. All right. Okay. Let's make these a little bit longer. And then I'm going a little bit lighter because on this side I can see these kind of the lights hitting. Add a little bit more blue. I'm going to go kind of light. Give it just bouncing. I think I'm still set on gouache. I'm going to switch back, back to my normal mode. There we go. Give a touch of highlights on that. Okay, so I still have a lot of value and darkness I want to add, but I see it's one o'clock and I know some people have to run and I really want to just do something fun with her hair. Um, I can tell you that I probably will spend at least another hour on this um, and I will definitely post the finished work so you all can see 
how I, what direction I took it in. Um, but I want to do a little bit of that hair at least. So, um, the first thing I have to do is I, I didn't leave enough space for it. So I can do two things. I can either reduce the size of um, her head or I can enlarge the size of the canvas. So I'm going to do a little bit of both. I don't want the canvas to get so big that I can't handle it. But I'm just going to go to crop and resize here. And I'm just going to pull it out a bit. You can see when I do that, the bigger I get it, the less layers it's giving me because it's it's telling me, you know, if you make it that big, you're increasing the the size of the file. So I'll just go a little bit bigger. And then I can um, make this all smaller by drag right on all of these. Once you have that, you can um, Oops. Say hit group and that will put them all in a group. And then by hitting the arrow key, I can then kind of just resize this. So I'm going to make it like that. To my other photo where I can see all her hair. Okay, so I'm going to make another new layer and I'm just going to put it below the group and I'm going to go ahead and start with the background color by just touching and sampling and then I'm going to go up and I'm going to go dark. So I really want to keep some of that kind of blue so I'm just going to pull and drag that down dark. Um, this is when, when you're doing something like this, if I was being realistic, I might go and get one of the, uh, let's see where they are. Where are the hair brushes? On your touch up, you can see that there are some hair brushes. Um, I like to, I tend not to use those for hair just because they, you know, can be so realistic. So I'm going to instead choose something else. Let's see. Something fun. Clouds might be fun. Maybe we will do some clouds for the, let's do that. Just to give a little, that's not clouds. Now this, I don't want her hair to end up looking like clouds. I just want to simply give myself a base for behind. And this is just another, one of the things that makes working digitally fun is you, I think it's really important to be able to allow yourself to think beyond the name of the brush. So just because this brush is called clouds does not mean you necessarily have to only use it for clouds. So here we're just using it um, for the background for her hair. And then I'm going to go up and go to painting and fresco. I love this brush. Um, I have a cat that is <laughs> being very vocal right outside my door. So apologies if you can hear that. Um, let me zoom in so you can see what the fresco is. It's such a neat brush. It creates this really kind of layered, you know, um, kind of look. So I'm going to just go ahead. This is still in that same color. And then I'm going to adjust the colors. Here we go a little lighter. And I, I am going to come back in here with some red warm colors too. Um, And this layer right now is below all of my painted face layers. So 
whatever I'm doing down here, I will want to come back on top a little bit to kind of show overlapping. All right, I had to let the cat in. <laughs> she was losing her mind. Okay. And let's go lighter. And I'm gonna just drag this over. I'm gonna just take it a little bit more towards the purple range. And I'm not trying to get any of her curls perfect because I can't, I just can't mimic that. They're, they're too wonderful, but I can kind of just give the impression. And I just keep changing the size of my brush here. Help, say hi, say hi, Fox. We're almost done. And then I think it's really important to have some warm in there too. So I'm gonna, if you zoom in, you can see there's definitely some warm tones in there as well. So I'm gonna get something a little bit warmer. And then I can kind of make touches of that as well. And then by changing the fresco, just like we did with the gouache brush um, up under rendering, rendering Changing the blend mode to multiply. I can then come in and add some really nice darks that have a little bit more warmth to them. And then I'll come back on top here. Get my gouache, sample one of those dark colors. Then I can come back on top of the drawing and add some of those baby hairs and some of those areas where the hair is overlapping her face a bit. Yeah, so that is how I will keep working on this and until I get it to a nice finishing stage. Let me close that down. So you can see I've still got a ways to go, but um, this is about what I can do in an hour. And I'll definitely post my finish and hope that you all will also take the chance to finish it up and tag me, post it on Sketchy and Sketchy Art School. Um, let me switch my camera back to me and get this guy out of the way. Yeah, so any last minute questions before I kind of log off here? or thoughts, uh, definitely sign up for 30 Faces 30 Days. Um, there's some coupon codes going out there. I think um, mine to say is 30F30D Tiffany. Um, tag me on Sketchy Art Schools. Let me see your drawing when you get finished um, or on Instagram. And definitely get over to Sketchy and check out all the great classes they have. But I'll be drawing in May. Um, every single day so that's um, I'm looking forward to it I've got some more boxes to unpack so I'll be ready but it's it's gonna be great so definitely sign up let me see um, I hope there are some good tips um, I hope you learned you know picked up something but you know let's see could you print your images as would you have to adjust the settings um, that's a great, printing questions are, are great. So I did this, I set my canvas up in RGB 
Procreate, the new version now has um, the option to also set up a canvas in CMYK. So if I knew that the end result of this was going to be a print that I wanted to print, I would probably go ahead and start in CMYK. And that would um, just help kind of ensure that the color accuracy was a little bit better. But uh, normally I work in RGB if I know I'm just doing it for the web or for my own pleasure. But yes, um, try CMYK if you're going to be printing and that might help with your, your settings. So, all right. Well, thank you all. Thanks for joining me. Um, I can't wait to see what you do. Please sign up for 30 Faces, 30 Days in May Prograde. It's going to be a super fun. If you have any interest in anatomy, check out my anatomy classes because we, just, we have a great time. So um, I'll see you again soon. And good. Good luck. Have fun.